Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us this afternoon or evening or morning, wherever you're you're calling in from. Um, just want to thank you for joining um, us today for our part three of our security uh, webinar series, kind of closing out this month with our C3 event, where we'll be focusing on vendor risk management and supply chain security. Uh, hope you were able to join some of our other security sessions that we had last week, and I think this one will really round it out um, in terms of conversation and content for you. But before we get started, uh, let's kick off with just some housekeeping needs. Um, you know, of course, remember that you should stay muted while uh, this um, is kicking off and while our presenters are speaking. Uh, but if you would like to ask a question, you can utilize the chat or the raise hand function and I will unmute you and you can ask your question live to our speakers. Uh, if you're comfortable, turn on your camera. This is a great way for all of us to engage virtually. So connect with members of your community as well as speakers uh, from Dell Technologies. Uh, and our webinar is being recorded right now. So uh, you will have access to it post event within the media library of the Dell client community website. So you can access it um, on demand. And of course, connect with your community, have fun and let's learn something today. Um, I'm sure some of you saw this email go out the other day. We are reintroducing our trusted tester program. This is a really great opportunity for members of the community to get under NDA with Dell Technologies and provide that feedback um, through focus group surveys, one-on-one uh, -on -one interviews, and you'll have the opportunity to beta test hardware and software. Uh, we actually have a Dell Mini Monitor out right now for some of the trusted testers to test. Um, we've done a couple of software studies um, as well as some focus groups. So it's a really great opportunity to provide that feedback and really gain some insight into uh, Dell Technologies Roadmap and learn some industry trends as well. So you can really uh, enhance your subject matter expert um, you know, toolkit and uh, help yourself grow within your organization. So be sure to check that out. And if you have any questions, please reach out to member services. We'll be happy, happy to help you out with those. Um, and wanna highlight our referral program. So this is our leaderboard. Uh, Modelum, you are killing it, good job. Uh, but it looks like race for that third place is still uh, you know, pretty hot and heavy. So uh, today <laughs> is the last day to refer people for an event. So Francisco and Adam, hopefully you guys referred some colleagues or friends to this event. Uh, we will announce the final leaderboard um, and the top three winners um, after this event today. Um, so be sure to keep an eye out on your emails for that. Um, and season two of Your Tech, Your Voice has uh, officially launched. Uh, be sure to check out these videos. We have um, Mike Lebecki, who's a Nat Geo Explorer. We've done some awesome events with him. So be sure to check out his story there. We also have Chris and Sarah from Atos. Chris is actually a trusted tester as well. So I'm sure he can um, share some insights there. And then of course, today we have Sarah Reedy from PAI. Um, she's got a great story as well. So be sure to check out season two. Um, and then getting into our agenda. So just kind of kicking off with our introduction today. We're going to first touch on vendor risk management um, and then lead into our supply chain security discussion, have a couple closing remarks, any last questions that we want to make sure to tackle, and then we'll lead into our virtual escape room. So I know you guys have seen some of these emails come through here, um, but we really want to know if you will be joining us. We want to get a quick head count here. Um, we'll be doing that virtual escape room after this event. Uh, you'll be able to be broken up into teams. So as a team, you will have to escape the room um, together and the winning team will win um, some gift card prizes of your choice. So definitely check that out. Um, it'll be really fun and we'll drop the uh, link in the chat as we close out this event today so you can access that. So I'm gonna keep this open just a touch longer um, just to make sure we get a rough head count. Um, but we'll probably start that probably about five minutes um, after one o'clock central. Um, so pretty much right when we close out here, be sure to um, access that link and um, we'll see you in there. Okay, it looks like we have a couple of people joining us. So that's awesome, thank you. Um, and then we will have a post event survey as well. So another opportunity to win some gift card prizes, another opportunity to give us feedback on how we're doing today. Uh, so be sure to look out for that from member services. 
and what we're all here for today. I uh, want to highlight our speakers today. So I mentioned Sarah Reedy is here with us. She's the director of IT at PAI and also a Dell Client Community Advisory Council member uh, and a participant in our um, Your Tech Your Voice program. So thanks for joining us today, Sarah. We also have Chris Hero, uh, a senior manager at Dell Technologies in field security on the cybersecurity team. And then we have John Boyle, who is the senior strategy lead of cybersecurity, manageability, services, and supply chain at Dell Technologies. Awesome group here with us. But to kick us off, Chris, uh, can you share a little bit about yourself? And we'll lead into that discussion. Yeah, hey, everyone. I'm Chris Haru. As Kristen mentioned, I uh, am a senior manager in the field security services group at Dell. Uh, really what that entails is we look at our uh, supply chain uh, all across Dell supply chain, including Dell facilities as, uh, and our key suppliers along the way. Historically, we've been more involved in our third party manufacturing and our logistics partners, but now uh, spreading some of that more in-depth uh, uh, security, uh, I suppose you'll say spotlight on uh, suppliers of all different uh, kinds and, and indirect vendors as well. And we'll talk about that a little bit uh, in, in some of the materials I have. So Kirsten, do you want me to just roll right into? Yeah, feel free to uh, kick into your presentation, Chris. All right, let me share my screen here. I'm distracted now because now all I'm thinking about is how I can win a drone. That thing looks awesome. <laughs> okay, does everyone see the intro slide with, with my picture? All right, perfect. So, you know, just, just kind of a, to kick us off here, this is not gonna be news to, to anyone on this call, but security is hard, right? And we, we always struggle with you know, what to do. There's so many risks, there's so many threats out there. Uh, we can't be everywhere at all times. And, you know, there's new risks every day. There's new technology, right? So, so part of the struggle that our business leaders are having, right, they're juggling these risks with the needs of business when they start talking about, well, how do we direct our budgets accordingly? How do we, um, hire people, what's our strategy around security, and how does that that weigh into some of the other needs of the business with, you know, production and, and uh, outreach and, and things like that, the, the quote-unquote historical uh, business pillars. So part of our job as security professionals is really to advocate for why security matters and what we're seeing more recently and, and why we're having chats like this now is we've spent a good part of the last 10 you know plus years securing our own walls but as we uh, uh, build more dependency on our suppliers and our vendors and our partners and and even customers in some extent we're exposing ourselves to additional security risk and the the million dollar question is how do we how do we help that how do we reduce that so when this leader is looking at all the security risk for you know, in our case, Dell and how do we protect Dell, it becomes a fairly direct and straightforward method of we need to secure XYZ and protect from these types of risks and, and let's figure out a way to do that. You know, budget isn't unlimited, but we can make the calls on the, the best for Dell. But the problem comes in, you know, we've got tens of thousands of partners that we rely on each day of different different levels of uh, risk and criticality to us. So how can we uh, uh, sort of project those same values on these, these companies that again are doing their own thing and they've got other customers they're, they're balancing out. So I, I know that um, all of us here on this call, we've got, we've got the budget to do everything we want and hire as many people as we want and, and you know, makes our day job much easier, right? So, so, you know, obviously I'm saying that in jest, but what's the chance that, you know, our vendors have similar budget to us? And further, what's the chance that those um, strategic uh, priorities and security are aligned to, to the values that, that we hold in our company? And I think those are the key questions that 
each of us need to be asking ourselves from our, our, our own business. What are our core values? What's important to us? Where are our particular risks and sensitivities? Uh, and let's really work hard to address that. Uh, and let's partner with our vendors to uh, make sure they understand what's important to us and see if we can uh, close this gap. So again, nothing new here. We, we all need to rely on suppliers. There's a number of different reasons, again, from the business side. Uh, no, no one really uh, partners with a vendor to reduce risk. Uh, you know, I, I mean, you can say, uh, you know, your security partners, but just inherently letting someone into your business is a risk. We do it for many reasons, right? And you can see here, um, Dell doesn't build our own microchips. We need Intel, uh, and, and there's a million other cases like that. Um, we need suppliers, we need partners, right? Uh, we also like to uh, use uh, our third-party manufacturers to scale our, our business, right? It becomes, and, and going in with the last point here, it becomes a cheaper option to explore. Um, and we also can diversify, we can get rid of uh, sole source uh, parts, we, we, we are accepting some of these risks, but what are the risks here, right? The biggest one that, that's probably in the news most often today is we're now uh, limiting control of our data, right? So our data that is near and dear to our heart and has you know, uh, uh, implications for exposure, we are now handing off to a second party or a third party um, and with lacking any agreements in place, we don't really know how they're safeguarding that. So it's critical that we, we have that. You know, at Dell, we've got privacy agreements with all uh, suppliers. We've got um, down to the BU level, we've got different security requirements. Those things are necessary to help protect uh, Dell and protect our customers at the end of the day. The other things we talk about are, are enterprise resiliency, right? So if a supplier were to go down, how does that hurt us? That, and that's probably not our focus today, but that's a real concern. And then also, you know, what are the, the local uh, laws, the regulations uh, that these suppliers and these vendors that we use have to comply with? And further, what are, what are possibly the conflicts with what they are legally bound to and what our requirements say and how do we resolve those? So I want to take a little time and talk about this pyramid. So one of the things that I think we've done uh, fairly well at Dell recently is to implement this van vendor management strategy. Uh, we, we call it our supplier management uh, governance. And it's really consists of four layers. The one thing I'll say off the top is these uh, four layers do not have to be taken as an all or nothing approach. You can select which layers work for you, right? We said at the beginning that this is a balance. Uh, bigger companies may have more resources and budget to throw at security. Smaller companies, uh, you know, may be a little more limited. Um, but depending on your own core values and your risks, we need to focus the resources where it matters most. But it's not all bad news, right? So if we start on the bottom here, so the compliance interactions, the good news here is this is done today uh, at your business. This inherently does not mean any sort of formal security action. So any uh, compliance interactions could be as simple as day-to-day uh, -day operations and looking for things that don't look right. So if your company produces widgets and all of a sudden the widgets stop, you're going to go look and see why that might be a security reason, it may not be. But that in itself is a compliance, uh, a type of compliance control. It may not be the strongest type of control, but it's some indicator to say, hey, something's not right here and we need to go fix it. On the other end of the spectrum, when we start looking at our vendors is more of an assessment or an audit piece. So again, pending how much time and effort we want to spend here, uh, I'll, I'll use Dell again as an example. We spend time uh, doing onboarding assessments with, with our partners. We also, uh, for our critical suppliers, will do regular audits. So we will send people out there or virtually in, in COVID days, um, and we will run through a list of security controls and ask them to 
tell us, um, you know, what, what uh, governance they have over a control. So show us a policy that says you do say access control for applications and also show us the evidence that that's being followed, right? So show us not only the policy, but show us your, your last log and, and where management went in and approved certain users, right? Now, obviously that's time consuming, but there are some other options here, right? There's the self attestation uh, where you can issue a form out, have them return it to you. Um, it gives them an idea of what's important to you, what types of controls are in place. Typically this is tied to some sort of contractual agreement. Um, the negatives here obviously is the verification could be lacking. You're sort of depending on whatever evidence they may or may not send back to you. So there's a certain level of trust there, um, but it's it's certainly one of the, the more, uh, I, I guess, um, low, low touch options. Now there's also things like SOC 2 reports, if folks are familiar with that. Uh, bigger vendors and partners may, uh, may have SOC 2, and this is, it's essentially an auditor uh, uh, assessment of this vendor that they spend anywhere from three to six months on site and then provide a standard report of security controls over this six month period. So the advantage is it's not a snapshot in time. It's a pretty good representation of, you know, how the company runs from a security perspective uh, with the negative part being uh, really two downfalls here. One is it's a pretty substantial investment for the vendor in both time and, and money. Uh, so smaller companies may not have this available, but for the ones that do have it available, uh, it's, it's meant to share, right? The second piece is it's focused on common security control. So if you have anything specific that you're looking for, it may not be covered in a report like that. Right. So, oops, I knew I would do that. Uh, so if we look the next level up, we, we call this our capability building sessions. And honestly, I feel like this has been a game changer for us uh, on, on the small scope that we've, we've um, started this with. So we have um, uh, achieved this in a couple different ways. Um, we're really trying to share best practices and build up relationships between security groups, uh, between Dell and our vendors. So we, we will have quarterly, uh, I'm sorry, not quarterly, uh, annual or biannual security summits where we invite uh, vendors into Austin and uh, talk about industry trends. We talk about uh, you know, new initiatives we're driving at Dell. Um, we will have breakout sessions to talk about what they're doing. And this is generally at a, um, you know, a, a VP type of level so they can talk about uh, prioritizations. We also do quarterly info sessions. That's more of a working team level where we, we um, you know, it's not meant to audit or score or drive corrective actions. It's just a, hey, how are things going? What are you concerned with? Here's what we're concerned with. Oh, you have that problem. Here's what we do. Uh, in security, we're taught to be very secretive because our controls are our security and we don't want to tell people um, what we have in place and potentially how to get through it. We're, we're trying to break that mold a little bit in a smart way, right? We, now that we're recognizing that our vendor security is our security as well, we're trying to partner and, and collectively build a, a strong environment. And I've already seen the, the side benefit to this is if uh, there is a security incident at a vendor, and they now have this personal relationship and touch point, they're a little more likely to pick up the phone and call you ahead of time and say, hey, we had this happen, we're getting ahead of it, these are some of the details, where previously you, you may not, you may find out about it on Twitter, and that's just the reality. So if we go uh, to the third level here, uh, this is a strategic ops review. Again, good news here, this is happening at some level in your organization, I guarantee it. At, at minimum, this is a discussion between uh, procurement or other business leads and the vendor to agree on services. It may or may not have uh, a adequate level of security in this uh, level, but that's that's sort of the um, the range here. You can start with low level security and then move up to more stringent contracts. Um, but this is where 
we really align business uh, 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 business goals and strategy for your organization and what the vendor is is bringing to the table for you. And then the last level here is executive reviews. So we've we've now started having biannual reviews um, at the VP level between Dell and our largest suppliers. And this is strictly to talk security. We talk security compliance. We talk about any major issues. We talk about any tabletop exercises we've done recently. Uh, and I think this is, is hugely important just to make sure that uh, both sides uh, have support from, from the top level. And, and realistically, without that and without that push and without that enforcement, uh, your security is on, uh, going to be on, on uh, loose footing. Sorry. Um, so I'll close out just by touching on some of the more recent uh, hot button issues or topics that have come up recently. So regarding cloud service, more and more uh, companies are moving data off to, to the cloud. Uh, this is, you know, really similar to how we would leverage other vendors, right? We're just looking to scale our business and, and sometimes it's, it's uh, more cost effective and uh, more efficient, honestly, to leverage cloud uh, versus uh, building our own uh, data centers or, you know, building the compute power that we need to run these huge applications. The technology in the past, uh, you know, 10, uh, sorry, five to 10 years has enabled us to do this now. But again, the, the core risk here is we're now handing over some of our critical data, our critical processes, our critical um uh, you, you know uh, customer information to a third party we lose the control it's outside of our walls half the time you can't even pinpoint where exactly it is in the world right so these are all new new issues right um one of the things that we we try to leverage is we try to look at industry standards here cloud is a, a prototypical example of you're not their only customer it's very hard to customize controls for a particular customer environment, uh, unless it's in the you know the, the hypervisor level. Um, so we we like to leverage um, the ISO twenty seven thousand seventeen. That that is uh, an industry standard. Most large uh, companies that operate in the cloud or do any AAS uh, will adhere to that or at least align closely to that, um, and that provides you a step ahead in making sure that you have some controls in place uh, to protect your data. If you need additional safeguards or um, security, then that would have to be built into your, your agreements as well. Uh, phishing attempts. So some interesting uh, facts I pulled up about phishing, uh, and this is nightmare fuel right here, um, but 94% of malware is delivered via email. Uh, what's another one? Phishing attacks account for more than 80% of reported security incidents. Uh, and the last one here, which surprised me a little bit, smaller organizations of uh, 250 employees or less have the highest targeted malicious email rate. The estimate is one in about every 300 emails coming in as a phishing attempt. And you know, we, we've talked a little bit about this um, before. Uh, it's imperative to have training in place, to have uh, simulations in place, so your users are aware that not every email is legitimate and could have huge ramifications, not only uh, for the company and uh, you know, creating a, a, a situation where credentials are compromised and now, now you have a lurker on your network, um, but also personal uh, life, right? Um, if your personal PC or your phone is, is tapped with malware, uh, your identity can be stolen and, and it causes a huge mess. Um, so bottom line, even, even where we are with, you know, if you have an organization where say five people are, sorry, 5% of people are falling for these phishing emails, that's considered really good from a industry standard. But if your organization is a thousand people large, you know, that's 50 people that are clicking these emails and, and uh, you know, still not, not out of the woods. So, and, and I think that ties closely to the next piece here about insider risk. Um, when we think of insider risk, you know, we tend to think of um, nation states paying off our people to go into the network. And, and that's frankly not, that, that certainly can happen and does happen, but that's not the biggest 
um, risk we see with insiders. So another thing that was interesting that pulled up is 95% uh, of security breaches uh, uh, are caused by human error. That would be considered an insider risk. And, and some examples of that are if, if I'm an operator on your network and I store sensitive data in a open file share, I'm exposing data. I'm not necessarily doing it maliciously, but I am opening the company up to uh, data exposure and uh, issues down the line. So the, the biggest thing I think to stress here is uh, a lot of this can be addressed with training. You know, we're in this day and age where there is, um, you know, job movement and people taking on new responsibilities and moving at the speed of business, as they say. And a lot of times we don't take care of that basic blocking and tackling, right, to make sure that people are aware of um, where data is kept, how to safeguard it, make sure you, you understand who you're, you're sending emails to, don't share your password, all of those, those basic things, right? Um, and there's also a technical aspect to that too, right? We want to make sure our systems are, are foolproof to use, right? Uh, if we have complicated manual process, there's a chance that, you know, there can be a, a mistake made along the way, and per perhaps that mistake might lead to, to an exposure. The last piece I'll talk about that we're all very familiar with over the past couple of years is, is a more dispersed workforce and more work from home and remote workers. So, there's a couple uh, things here. Um, historically, for any remote workers, the best practices are to make sure you're using uh, multi-factor authentication. And that, that makes sure that from an identity perspective, the people dialing into your, your network or connecting to your applications are who, who they say they are and who you think they are, so you can trust them or not. Um, the other piece is, and, and this would go for folks even within your buildings, and I think John's going to talk about this a little bit, uh, there's a move towards zero trust. So if there is a device on a network or connected uh, via an outside source, and it is not recognized by, um, you know, your company, um, you shouldn't let it do anything, really. You should kick it off and uh, have some steps in place that it, it's more or less going to prove who it is. Um, so I, I won't touch more on that because I think we're going to get into that a little later. Um, the third part is VPN critical, right? So now you've got your identified user authenticated. You've got your application on your company side, but you want to make sure that traffic back and forth is, um, you know, not able to be uh, sniffed or, or intercepted. Um, firewalls will also help with that too, but more from the aspect of making sure that if there is malicious data coming across um, that that um, that that tunnel or that VPN, uh, that it's it's recognized before it does damage within your your internal network. So there are always new risks on the horizon. These, these are just touching on a few. Um, that's that's all the content I have. So I look forward to opening this up for for questions and discussion. Um, let's bring in Sarah to kind of share her feedback on. Sarah, can you share a little bit more um, kind of based off of your experience in uh, at PAI and kind of what your uh, nonprofit organization is experiencing in the vendor risk management world and kind of how you guys are, are working through att attestations? I know we kind of talked a little bit about that, but can you just kind of share based off of what Chris was kind of diving into how that works within your org. Yeah, right. Well, as a nonprofit, we're audited every year. And as part of that audit, there is a lot of questions around IT controls and systems. Um, a large part of what we're asked to do is provide them with examples of security and controls that we have in use. And more and more, they're asking about um, our hosted vendors, our cloud services. So it's really important. Um, I will say, you know, you talked about zero trust, Chris, we are, we're looking at going to that. I've got my IT manager trying to understand how, you know, how we do that, how we can do that um, with, for us with very little budget, but it's, it's possible. I mean, it's, it's really not difficult to do. It's just understanding the systems that you have and what you can take advantage of. Um, but I'd also like to say that I love what you talked about as far as getting the relationship with your vendor. 
um, you know, maybe eight, nine years ago, we made the, or I drove the decision that we went with Dell for all of our equipment. And we have just a phenomenal relationship. And I can point to in the last two years where we had two security-based incidents that Dell, it, it wasn't theirs. It was, one was Microsoft. I can't remember what the other one was, but my, my Dell contact reps <laughs> were the one that's helped us uh, solve that. So it, it just goes a long way um, if you have a great relationship. But yeah, from our standpoint, um, there's so many resources out there. If you just talk to your vendors that you have, your trusted vendors, um, they can really help you understand how to better use what you have. And it's been just such a great boon as a nonprofit to understand that, yeah, we, we can take care, of, we can take advantage of zero trust. So. Um, you know, really interesting points, Chris. I, I like everything that you talked about, um, especially getting the attestations and the audit reports and whatnot, because we have to do that every year. Yeah, I, I'll just interject a couple of points. One is, is about the partnership piece. It, it feels like, you know, there's been this paradigm shift a bit from, you know, uh, it's, it's your problem, not ours. Don't don't let your problem come into our sandbox type of thing. And, and you're on your own and we're not going to tell you what we're going to do. We're, we're going to try to be, you know, we don't have to be faster than the bear. We just have to be faster than you <laughs> type of mentality. And, and now we've realized um, as an industry that no, if, if a key supplier does have an incident because they have weak controls and don't really have guidance, then it is going to impact us, whether it uh, becomes a cyber incident for us or a continuity play uh, and and no one wins in that scenario. So now we're starting to look at it and 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 say, let's huddle and let's talk together about the issues we're, we're facing uh, to uh, along our business stream uh, and and let's let's figure out together uh, how to how to solve. The attestation piece is always tricky because it's 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 good. It's better than having nothing. Um, but sometimes you look at those and say, man, there's no way that they're doing that, <laughs> you know, uh, without that, that extra piece of verification, or at least having, you know, uh, your, your party or a third party, uh, go in and, and, um, put the stamp of approval on it. There's always a seed of doubt and you never really know until something unfortunate happens. Yeah. And I think the hardest piece is balancing what you talked about, that balance between um, budget, because for us, that's a really big thing um, against, you know, how, how to protect your staff and your content. So it, again, it just gets back to having a really good relationship with your vendors, because I'll, I'll ask my vendors for all kinds of information. Um, and you're right, it's getting better and better. Um, and, and I just wanted to talk, somebody had, there are a couple of people questioning that malware stat. If you look at the Verizon annual report, um, or also I think Stanford had a report out as well, both of them list that human interaction element is, is really high. And I've used those in my organization because um, we do frequent phishing reminders and testing for our staff. Yeah, yeah, those, those are, uh, as I said, those are critical, right? Because phishing is happening and it is lucrative. So it is not going to slow down. Um, we, we've, you know, kind of in general too, I think the the mantra is for for general cyber attacks, it's not a question anymore of if, it's it's a question of when. So we're trying to emphasize, you know, let, let's certainly try to prevent as much as possible and not lose focus there. But Secondarily, let's put some um, time into detection and uh, response so that we can uh, contain and limit, uh, you know, the um, uh, ex ex expanse of an issue and turn a mountain into a molehill. The opposite, you know what I mean? Awesome. Well, thank you, Chris, for um, sharing um, all that information on vendor risk management. I think now we'll move on to uh, John's piece about supply chain and obviously zero trust. And we'll talk a little bit about below the OS as well. Um, so, John, if you could share. Oh, looks like you already are. Perfect. 
hey, well, I'm uh, happy. I, don't, I kind of don't really know what day it is because I'm on holiday in Breckenridge. And so <laughs> may always make these a priority because, um, you know, at Dell, we want to make sure that as, as partners, we are available. And and uh, it was important for me to, to be here today with you all. Um, so if a bear does come in, I'm in the bear territory, but I, I might, I won't run. Um, I'm going to talk to you today. It's a great, great segue from Chris's segment. Um, you know, one of the things I'll talk about today is I don't have any statistics that you can really find from analysts or on the web. Uh, as a strategist, what we really try to what I try to look at with uh, you know our, our one to five year time horizon beyond the current roadmap and product group is tracking things that are going on in the world, uh, just with interactions with with customers like you and partners like you, because there's there's stuff that people can Google all the time. But what we look at, and I'll talk about here real quick, are some things that I've been tracking this last year, uh, even six months. Um, you know, customers these days want trusted technology and security partners, not product pushers. The great thing about the attention put on security right now is that people are paying attention to security. The problem is also is that the fight pattern of people calling themselves security providers or partners or, or product uh, developers is really full. And, and I grew up in Seattle, so my really bad analogy is kind of like, uh, you know, when Nevermind got launched by Nirvana, all of a sudden everybody was a grunge band and there was a lot of bad bands. So you really want to make sure that you vet like how long have people really been doing security? Is it just like a product or are they really a good partner uh, to you, you know, not just in, in selling you something, but making sure you're implemented properly. What else do you have? What, what your posture is currently and what your unique mission is for your organization? Because no, as my dad would say in healthcare, he's a healthcare exec, no two uh, uh, medical uh, facilities he's, he's managed are the same. The mission's always different and everybody has a different starting place. You know, with COVID and the cyber attacks and all security orders, obviously it's really accelerated demand for security, zero trust and sassier terms that are thrown out there. And we're really working hard to define those from Dell's viewpoint. And we're always happy to schedule time with you to dive deep in those and then manage security. And one of the things that was just mentioned was that, you know, this not everybody's able to stand up a full, you know, security team. It's expensive, talent short. And so the managed security that like, let's say like Dell has the managed detection and response service um, helps people get that enterprise grade um, security in their supply chain and in their environment at scale and cost for their size business, whether you're 50 people or 50,000. The executive orders and the recent legislation has really drawn attention to supply chain and other, other topics. We've been talking about this for a long time and I've been on supply chain security at Dell for years. Um, and it was great to see IDC kind of finally catch up in 2021 to talk about security tenants are breadth and depth of endpoint security below the OS and supply chain. So um, we feel like that, that we were on the mark uh, prior to that at Dell because we really, want to draw um, attention to the things that, you know, are not always the things we see in our day-to-day -day, uh, work life. Um, the high profile attacks have, have been out in the news. We know things that like in healthcare, financial services, energy, nuclear, others that have been successful attacks. And to be a successful attack, you need to have a successive chain of events called the kill chain pulled off successfully. It's not like everybody's a Matthew Broderick with a modem phone and a big gulp hitting the whopper in five minutes. Um, you really need to have things that, that successfully, uh, you know, conclude a kill chain and do an attack. And so we really want to make sure that we are disruptive as possible as a partner in our supply chain security and our device security and everything we do so that when you're working with a partner like Dell, um, we help with that disruption of a kill chain. Now, the other thing is, is that there's a, a lot of focus on finances and data uh, as far as the, 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 the sources of, uh, of focus. But what I like to draw focus to is that one, everybody's a target. It doesn't matter if you're big or small. Um, when, the, when, the, when the heat's on the big, big targets, they're going after the little targets. We saw that shift into, into sled and small business this last year after the, uh, the high profile targets last about a year ago. Um, the other thing is, is that yes, the data can get compromised. Yes, the financial, financial hit could happen and the brand can be impacted. But when you're talking about healthcare and financial services and energy, and any of those critical infrastructures are compromised, like some of the cases we've seen in the past two years, then lives get impacted. And let's use healthcare as an example. Healthcare, you know, a uh, facility gets shut down or something happens to the networks. And uh, there's examples of the, the cancer patient treatment they had for years, people doing chemo and radiation wiped out, uh, a NICU shut down. And, and unfortunately, some uh, infants who were really fighting, you know, were impacted. And so let's all remember that the work that we do, yes, it's financially, there's financial goals, but that we are all in critical infrastructure 
whatever segment we're in, we are impacting lives around the globe. And that's how Dell views it. We're here as a partner to make sure that we're protecting those things. And then the 2022 global events, there's a lot of talk. We've talked about the cloud, move to the cloud. I will say this, uh, in this last quarter, I've gotten a lot of questions from a lot of critical infrastructure uh, around the world, companies and, and government organizations about um, the role of on-premise again. Because when a country loses their internet access and an embassy needs to bug out, or there's a risk of, uh, of uh, assets being nationalized by another country, um, the, the, the cloud may not be available. And so we always have to make sure we keep an eye on what, what's on-prem and available for security and how that works if the internet shuts down, because we saw that this year. And so um, there's a lot of concern around just the balance of the, the on-premises capabilities, uh, air-gapped capabilities in, in conjunction and partnership with the, the um, cloud. So we're always trying to reduce the attack surface. This is not really a complex slide, but everything we do in our supply chain, we want to reduce the attack surface, be ahead of the curve as far as how we think um, you know, things might be compromised. We do pen testing at Dell. We do um, you know, the different flavors of pen testing on our devices and on our software. Uh, and our firmware and that sort of thing. And we also, when we vet those partners that we work with, we make sure that they do those things as well because you're only as, as good as you know, the, the last pen test. And we are very adamant about doing that. And one of the documents that we'll, sh we'll share with you at the end, we do a big uh, dive on how we treat our supply chain and, and pen testing is part of that. Zero trust, there's a lot of stuff on zero trust. Uh, for the last three years, I've always joked, it's been a really great t-shirt at every um, event that I've gone to. But we're really, really defining this as far as the considerations of zero trust and how we view it. And it starts with the supply chain. And I'll go through some of the supply chain real quick as far as how we control our supply chain. Um, and supply chain is not just physical. I mean, I close my eyes and I think of like, you know, trains, automobiles, um, boats, um, uh, airplanes, trucks, you know, and um, but digital. A lot of the attacks have come through digital supply chains, people not closing off configurations properly, people not doing pen testing, the development process of a secure development supply chain for code and patches, delivery and all kind of stuff. Um, that's important. And then as, as Chris talked about, the facilities that Dell manages, you know, the way we secure those, the people that we have in those facilities. At Dell, we view all of our people as part of the supply chain. We are all part of the supply chain for what we work on with you all. And it starts with the foundation of the PC and the devices we work with, of course, we'll talk about some of that. Uh, identity management is one of the pillars that we, we are calling out, as well as the, um, the pillar of the endpoint, as well, and then the, um, uh, pro, uh, was it the, uh, um, I'm trying to think of the word, I'm actually drawing a blank, I'm surprised it's the mountain there, but pretty much the, uh, the policy management, so the policies you have, you know, one user who might be a new sales, you know, person, may not need to have horizontal access to the development side of the environment. So that whole micro segmentation, for instance, as well as uh, the identity of the person that helps control like how an attack might expand once it's in. Um, knowing what's in your environment, you know, we, we have capabilities through, through Dell that we help customers identify in a huge environment or a small environment, who's hooking into what. And through something like uh, the VDR technology, we can do an assessment and say, here's the exact devices that are in your environment. Uh, how many Linux, how many Windows, how many Apple, how many iOS, Android, what kind of networking switches, all that kind of stuff. Because things get added and it's hard, to, it's easy to lose track. And then the uh, configurations as we talked about and then learning just to kind of have an ongoing assessment of your environment. So you're always on top of it and being proactive. Um, and so if you're ever interested in learning more about how Dell views Zero Trust or any of these things, we're always happy to do a one-on-one -on -one with you guys. Supply chain security. This is this is a slide I created a couple of years ago because supply chain is this big ocean to kind of boil and think about it. But the thing about Dell is to know about, and I would call it out Intel is another one that that also does this as well. We own the entire life cycle from manufacturing the components as far as where they're sourced, who made them, where they made them, that they're authenticated um, along the way through what we call PPID and secure component verification, which is a way to digitally, uh, you know authenticate that it's a Dell part and that nothing's been compromised. Through the assembly process um, and customization, uh, the, the tools we have for BIOS verification for customers to use, guess what? We use those in the factory. Every step of the way, we verify the BIOS and other things to make sure that they have not uh, been altered or updated you know, as, as the, the uh, devices travel through the process. 
We have services to help with customizations. We can customize anything from your image to sanitizing hard drives prior to re-imaging them. Uh, we even put logos in the back of, of, of lids, but we have a lot of stuff that we put on security wise that we can pre-configure before it ships out. And you can even track your shipments yourself if you'd like to. One of the things I'll call out is that inside the facilities themselves, um, Amy Price is on the call right now, and I've been there quite often in Nashville, for instance, we have the, what we call obfuscation of data. If you walk our floors, you cannot tell where those shipments are going. They do not say an address or a customer name or whatever. The data is obfuscated in the system to who needs to know that data, whether it's a federal, commercial, or whatever customer. And so we really safeguard um, everything on the floor in the process. And then when it ships and delivers, we have very secure uh, options for shipping and delivering uh, is standard, but we also have a lot of premier premium options based off of requests from some government agencies. We also deploy, they're available for commercial users. And then we don't view that the, uh, the, the supply chain lifecycle ends there because when you take the device ownership from Dell, we are still uh, helping you with the licensing, the entitlements, the updates, whether they're you know patches or you know, software updates or anything uh, to make sure that that process of delivering those, uh, you know, physical or digital updates is just as secure as the process we own within our, our own manufacturing process. All the way to the end, when you say, hey, I need to get a new Dell computer and um, I need to safely end of life this device, because as we know, the most vulnerable part of you know, if you, how many people have you seen like somebody dropping off an HP computer or a Dell computer or a Lenovo computer to, um, to Goodwill and just give the computer away with the hard drive. I mean, that blows me away. We will help you destroy that securely and we will do it in a sustainable way so that those materials make the next computer. So that's how we view our supply chain. We've got a great paper uh, that's not a product paper. It's just a, about a 10 page uh, uh, write up that one of the government agencies requested that we, we actually uh, deliver to them and it's available to everybody about how Dell secures the supply chain. But finally, um, you know, one of the things in the strategy side of things we're looking at is that the device itself, you know, they're not all created equal. Dell, there's a lot of security imbued into the Dell devices that you use that you may not see. And as Chris said, we don't advertise because, you know, just as we find out whether there's problems with some software that, you know, it's readily available to everybody, it's readily available to the bad guys. So what we want to make sure that you know is that uh, from, the, from the device itself, on the bottom part here, we call it below the operating system, in our, we own the BIOS process. We develop our own BIOS. We don't outsource that. We're one of the only we're one of the OEMs that that owns our entire process and our BIOS and everything that we do. Um, we have unique things in our our Dell Trusted Device Agent called Ophos Verification. I talked about that. How we do that in the factories. So well, that's available to you as well. We have BIOS Image Capture. Makes sure you can capture a, a, a last you know a good status of a, a BIOS image and compare it to a past image. Uh, we have BIOS indicators of attack. The idea there is that you want to track behavior that could see an attack coming and feed it into tools that you already have, like a SIM or something else that's kind of analyzing um, the data. And in that regard, we've also hooked in the below the OS capabilities to uh, tools like Splunk or to Carbon Black or to CrowdStrike and other um, VDR, EDR, XDR solutions so that Dell in your environment, as opposed to other uh, endpoint devices, is not a static, dark device that you don't know what's going on. The Dell device can feed into those things that you've already invested in and contribute to the conversation and, and feed the machine learning uh, engine even further. So if you have CrowdStrike or Carbon Black, great. We will connect into that and feed the, the telemetry from uh, Dell Trusted Device. And the idea is there is that Dell is participating in that security analysis as part of our supply chain, as part of our devices in your environment. And that goes for all devices. Finally, you know, we want to focus on uh, your, as your partner, as your mission of security and technology, whether it's, you know, knowing more about what your needs are for supply chain, whether it's shipping uh, securely and sustainability, we have, everybody's got different requirements. Uh, and we say critical infrastructure. I've actually stopped saying commercial a long time ago, because really most of the, the companies we work with, everybody's critical to how the world works. And when we talk about critical infrastructure sectors, here's a good summary of them on the, on the left. And in that regard, we focus on the core of our systems, whether they're servers, uh, storage, the clients, networking, whatever. We wanna make sure we have the right software, whether it's below the operating system, the firmware layer, that sort of thing, with a lot of privilege. 
um, or the, the partner, the, the software we develop or partner with, um, like the endpoint detection response. We have the services uh, layer, which I'll talk about in a second, but that that really is imbued and is integrated with the systems. It gives you an option to really have a nice ecosystem um, out of the box. And finally, services, because as a partner, you know, people might want to deploy this stuff themselves, the, the devices and endpoint detection or XDR technologies themselves, or, you know, what's their path to zero trust? Are you just trying to figure out, do you need an NGAV, uh, next generation antivirus, or are you looking at workloads, that sort of thing? Uh, services is there to help you as well, because the services is the arm that's really going to help you uh, either help you do it for yourself, partner to do it together, or we can do it for you. Something like managed detection and response where we're con constantly monitoring your environment. Um, and that's really what you want is that partnership. And so again, I know this is kind of a, an ephemeral conversation today, but we are always available in the security team to, to do a custom chat with your team, you know, figure out what your starting point is, what your mission is and where you need to get to to be in a, a more secure footing so that you can accomplish your goals for your organization and for your customers. Um, finally, um, these are some great reads. Uh, every, every customer we give these to uh, love these things. We have two of them on the left here that we did that talk about um, our, our endpoint security below the OS, you know, type of uh, you know, how your device is really constructed and the security that's imbued in the commercial devices. The partnership of trust, supply chain security. You know, Amy and I have worked really hard over the years to, to iterate this and work with the teams. And it talks about a lot of things that customers ask us um, about supply chain security at Dell. If, you, if those questions are not answered in there, we have a process to get some custom answers for you um, based off of, you know, what an organization's requirements are. Um, things that we just don't throw out there, but we're happy to under NDA talk to you about what we do with the supply chain security. It's very important. Uh, a part of Dell is understand how we manufacture things and secure your devices, data, and everything else. Um, and then finally, and we have a great partnership with Intel. Like I said, uh, they are ones that um, that we I would say another good example of a company that that owns the entire life cycle. They have created something for other companies to use called Trusted Supply Chain. It's a lit. It's not really like an entire supply chain solution, but it's really kind of like that that uh, shipping and delivery phase thing. Um, we don't use that because we as Dell, we have our own supply chain all secured and locked down. I will say that some other OEMs don't do the entire supply chain themselves and they have used Intel solution, which is interesting, but it's really meant for uh, businesses who, who have that need to just have that extra little help. So look at those white papers. But um, other than that, you know, I think the ongoing conversation is things are changing month to month. I mean, I can come back next month and have some different things that we're seeing in the world. And we always want to be available to you as your partner in the community um, and help you secure your ecosystem so that your customers can, can enjoy all the things that you provide for them and, and life in the world goes on. But right now it's very disruptive. So hopefully this has been a little a good glimpse of what we do at Dell, uh, as well as security, supply chain, uh, some things that maybe you haven't seen presented. Um, and again, open offer that if there's anything that you need one-on-one, -on -one, uh, reach out to anybody like you know Amy or anybody else, since you can always get the right people to, um, to focus on your mission and, and kind of where your starting point is. Um, that is all I have today. And uh, th thanks for having me and, and our team. And it's a great discussion. Awesome. Thanks, John. Uh, before we close out with any questions that the community would have, Sarah, I'd love to hear from you. Um, really just based off of some of the conversations that you and I have had about your company's changing landscape, how you're currently hybrid, but then you might go back into the office and then you have some, some uh, you know, members of your team who will always be hybrid. And that just definitely creates some headaches in terms of security. So can you touch on a little bit of that and kind of see it, share how these um, things that we're learning here can be very applicable to a variety of members of our community? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the big thing is right now we haven't been traveling and my staff travels overseas. I mean, everywhere overseas. And so um, we have to just get back into this habit of, you know, you got to have a software VPN, you got to be safe, you got to run all your updates. Um, so it's just those, those we have to bring back to top of mind with our staff again. Um, but I was really interested to hear the whole um, entire life cycle discussion when our um, laptops, our computers are end of life for us, nobody wants to use them. 
we have found um, an e-cycler who, you know, does according to NIST and ISO and the data destruction, but it costs money. But boy, I'd be really interested to um, talk to my Dell rep about what Dell could offer us because we're, you know, we do it. We don't let anything go out of our um, office unless we've wiped it or we know it's going to be shredded or wiped. So yeah, I'm really interested to hear more about that. Um, not sure what you know what those services are and then just as far as uh zero trust again it's i think more and more because my staff they'll be coming back into the office and we actually use a sassy service product ourselves um, in the office but right now 90 percent of my staff are not in the office and we additionally have uh five staff members who are full-time overseas, not even remote in the US, but they're overseas. So, you know, looking at zero trust, identity management, endpoint and policies, those are really top of line for us now. There's only two of us, so it can be a little hard to get through all of that for 50 staff members. But you've also reminded me that, you know, we need to look at our equipment as well and what that provides. So we're all on Dow. Um, and I, Sorry to say, but I forgot about safe BIOS and things like that. I mean, those are really important reminders that we need to talk to our Dell rep about, hey, you know, how can we better uh, position our equipment for our staff members, especially when they're not here in the office. So it's, it's really great to get those reminders. I just remind, need reminders all the time because this landscape has changed so fast, like, ah. Thank you all so much. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Sarah. No, I was just gonna say I didn't know if anybody had any questions. Yeah, I was just gonna say we have about three minutes left, so if we want to open it up for a couple questions, um, you can utilize the chat or the raise hand function within Zoom. I will unmute you, and you can ask your question live, um, or of course post in the chat. We can uh, read it aloud to the audience. Um, but if there's nothing, um, I'll just close out a little bit if you guys are pondering your questions. Um, but we will be having our virtual escape room coming up. Uh, it looks like Jack just posted that into the chat. Um, so we'll give you guys about a five minute grace period or so uh, to get into that virtual escape room. So we'll officially launch it and you'll be uh, put into your breakout rooms at about 105 Central. Uh, so be sure to uh, click that link and then um, we can have a little bit of fun. Um, but if there's no questions, I just really want to thank Chris, John, and Sarah for joining us today, sharing your insights and knowledge and, um, you know, just taking the time with the community. It's, it's very important, very impactful, and um, we really appreciate you. Always, always here. Yeah, thank you, everyone. It's great. Awesome. It was a pleasure. Um, thank you. Yeah. Well, thanks everybody. Um, I will close it out. Uh, the, the escape room link is in the chat um, and we hope to see you guys there. And this will be up on the Dell client community site. And John, I actually am gonna shoot you a note so we can get some of those resources up on the Dell client community site as well. Some of those white papers. Just, yeah, just send it to me and Amy. I think uh, Amy's got the latest greatest, um, but they're, they're really great reads. They are. Awesome. Great. Well, thank you all so much. And we will see you in our virtual escape room. Bye. Cheers. Thank you. Bye. Cheers. Everyone.